I wanted was easy, fast access to emergency stuff. These cold still roads are all we'll ever find in memories made from trails we left behind along the way. I know these roads will lead us home. Okay guys, so what happens when you have a lot of trouble putting it together, doing a DIY? Well, the only solution is to actually get the owner of the damn company to come down to McAllen, all the way from Houston. Mr. Willie Vera, thank you so much for showing up, brother. You're welcome. Look at you, you got all the tools. Yeah, we have a, a pack out kit. So when we do our installs, we've uh, done this a time or two, so. How long, do, how, how long does it take you to put this together? And how many times have you done this? I've done this hundreds of times. Um, if I'm doing this without like bullshitting or talking to people. To like, the camera, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can knock it out in about an hour, like an hour per side. Like it doesn't take long at all. Incredible. So, yeah, Incredible. That's, window removal takes about 20 minutes. Uh -huh. We'll trim, trim first. Yeah. Window then prep yeah and the install is quick and then after that what takes the longest time for me is usually reassembly of trim that always fights me it always fights so even though it's easy it's the hardest part but getting it back to perfect so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm not gonna take away from his time he's been <laughs> driving he's been he's been uh, he's been on the road since three in the morning guys Six hours. Six okay. hours, guys. That's messed up. Hey, but I've done a lot of drives in Colorado. Yeah. And I'm used to driving overnight, so this has kind of prepared me for situations like this. So. Yeah. Well, God bless you, bro. Because <laughs> anyway, I, what I'm going to be doing, guys, is I, I really want I really want to show you how the pro does it. And so instead of getting in his way, I'm just going to do my very best to follow him with the camera, and hopefully I, I can ask a question or two while he's doing it. You know, so that is going to make it a lot easier for you guys when it's your turn to install your gull wing, okay? So let's let him work. So Willie, you know, he's got this new uh, new material that he's trying out over here. He's telling me the powder coating, Willie. So now it has a layer of primer underneath it along with um, the powder coating. So it's like double layered and it is the sturdiest, most chip resistant. I was about to test that right now on this. <laughs> so let me ask you, so this is perfect for those of us, I, I don't want to interrupt you, no, you know, no, you no. just keep doing. Um, for those of us that go to the beach constantly, I mean, you know, we're always scared of the oxidation, you know, uh, the rust, things like that. You know, this this should be a whole hell of a lot more resistance, isn't it? This is the most resistant stuff you can probably put on anything steel, aluminum. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> I don't even know how, how, how to, what to tell you, but the texture is, it just feels like high quality. All right. Really nice, really nice. He's got the nice seals right there, okay? Well, which will inspire confidence, guys. All right. While Willie gets his tools ready, let me take a minute to explain why he came down to install the gull wings personally. I had already purchased a gull wing from Velox Off-Road months before. I hired a glass shop to remove the window and I got to work on the project myself. I was able to successfully install it but noticed the fit wasn't quite right and water was leaking. I contacted Willie and he told me they had just discovered Lexus GX460 models from 2010 to 2013 had a slightly different fit, so the gull wing I purchased had been tested on the later models only. Sandy is a 2012, so yeah, well, didn't fit. Vilox got to work on the prototype immediately for the 2010 to 2013 Lexus GX460 models. Thanks to their state-of-the-art equipment, a new gull wing was developed and put into production. Willie is very big on customer service, so he offered to drive down from Houston and install not one, 
but two gull wings. Pretty stubborn in there, yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, it doesn't. So guys, what he's removing right there is the plastic glass that he had sent me to cover that. Oh, watch out. Uh, to cover that uh, um, that window. And uh, I, got, I got some gloves, Willie. I didn't think it was gonna break. I, I got some Kevlar gloves, bro. Okay, there you are. Wow, this stuff is brittle. I don't know if it's gonna be brittle like that. Nice. Look at that. Well, that adhesive was working. I'll tell you that much. That's for sure. <laughs> that's not. That won't be reused. No. Yeah, that's trash. Be a, uh, install now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so now, what he's gonna do is, and this is a crucial part that they do stress is the cleanup yep. the cleanup of these of this material right here yeah yeah, yeah you saw that yeah so and another cool thing i mean i don't know i mean if you're just gonna if you're gonna install this on your own and that's really what we're focusing on right here yes i'm blessed to have willie here but, you know, uh, if you're going to be doing this, you know, there's going to be some important tips here and some learning experiences that I had. If you do take it to a window shop, I mean, a glass shop where they're going to do this professionally and remove the glass like I did, you might want to ask them first, you know, see what their process is. Because, man, look, look at these. They just went straight into the metal right here. And that is... Uh, that, that's kind of heartbreaking. Yes, it's hidden, but it's still heartbreaking. You know, it is your baby. So, you know, that's kind of messed up. Uh, Willie, however, has a special glass removal tool. Okay. That is uh, so, so neat. So you might want to maybe ask around, ask the glass shop if they have something similar. And um, he's going to show us just how much more efficient and cleaner it is to remove it with that tool. So what he did, he's he already put some of this, uh, used some of this liquid right here, the denatured alcohol. And now he's gonna use this buffering so, tool. Yeah, these are rubber wheels. Rubber and wheels? And they're used to like remove stickers or decals. And what it does, it just, it doesn't harm your paint. It just removes anything on the surface. Um, nice. The downside is that it's going to make a mess. Sorry, We're outside. We're outside. Yeah. No problem. Tape up there. Yeah. How crucial is removing as much of it? How crucial is it to the insulation? Um, it, it's important, um, but it's not as important as you think. As, so whenever you first remove your glass, you'll have this bead of caulk, right? Yeah. Um, What's important is just getting it as smooth as, as possible mm -hmm. and not removing it so you don't have like raised surfaces. But as you see the uh, foam on the back, um, the double sided tape, yeah. you know, it, it, it conforms to, you know, undulations yes. on the body. So it's not crucial to completely remove all the adhesive, yeah. um, but it is crucial to have like a good clean surface that the tape can adhere to. Right. When you bolt it down and there's that double sided tape, mm -hmm. nothing's gonna get in there. Nothing ever, we've never had a leak on the back side of the wings. We make mistakes, yeah, you know, yeah. every company, and we've learned from our mistakes. So there's been wings that have leaked, right? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we've fixed every single one of them okay. 100%. There's yeah. not a leaky wing out there. We don't sell something that leaks. Mm -hmm. So in the early stages, when we were learning, and we were trying to get a repeatable process of bending these things. Um, yeah, some of them could get overbent, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so now we have a jig that bends and has stops for each model. And we're fixing to move to a hydraulic press that's going to have like a die. It's kind of like a stamper, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's going to be um, like a table hydraulic stamper. Okay. Um, instead of like big steel that you see like automaker. Yeah. This is more going to be like a form that just kind of fits them. So we'll have one for each model and it'll be a very consistent. Then yep. as we grow and as we get more equipment and mm -hmm. 
you know, everything is getting better. First thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that, that thing just goes uh, clockwise once, and it's real easy to remove. Of course, it does help that, you know, <laughs> that the third row seat has been removed. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, we also pull this. Yeah, the gasket. Which, um, pro tip, usually this thing is covered in grease, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and? What's that? And? Well, well, it's when covered you, in grease and yeah, what? Once you get it on you, it's, it does not come off. Boom! I got you ready, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I figured. I figured, really. Yep. So these things just pop off, just like that. Let me get on the door. Yes, go ahead. Same thing over here. Yeah. Move gasket. This one does not have grease, but we just kind of pull it away yeah. to access the trim a little easier. I've removed that several times now. And, uh, he's popping off that area. Let me go on the other side because. Oh yeah. So the first thing he did was remove, remove this one right here. Okay, and it only goes clockwise. And um, then he went ahead and removed the gasket here. Okay, the liner. He did the same thing with a rubber liner over there. Now that handle that you see there, you just use that plastic trim, remove those little uh, caps. And it's a 10 mil. It's a 10 millimeter. As most Toyotas are. Yeah. So you see that right there, that hole, there usually is um, another bolt there, but because I had my molly panel, I removed it. And so you don't have to worry about that. He's removing that trim over there. All right. just pops off easily as well To uh, install these in headliners, yeah, <laughs> and then you have to hook into those parts of the clip. That's yeah, that's kind of confusing right there. They're a pain in the butt because you have to yeah. lift up uh -huh. in order to remove it away, and it's got a tuck down behind here. And this guy, yeah, that one, order. that one killed me right there. As you can see, it, I, it, it's broken. Okay. How do you put it that was. Uh, uh man that was so, so crazy to me this one does not have to come off <laughs> okay um yeah so these clips on lexuses um they have these little clips <laughs> that you have to twist sideways yeah to remove it and i later learned that you don't have to remove them <laughs> guys that, that is a valuable please yeah. listen to what a guy is saying right here so just drop it down a little bit yeah. because the only thing you're gonna have to do is when you install this yeah. you need to get your fingers or get a tool on the nut on the back side yeah whenever this bolts on yes for the love of jesus do not do not remove this don't be stupid like uncle robert over you here because you can't remove it oh uh, it's a pain in the butt to put back, to put back on yeah important to have those uh those little grips right there Yes. Now in this particular case, I had already made, I had already drilled for the other one. I don't know if it's going to be any different. Uh, we should use the same holes. Okay. And um, we should line up. 
Because yeah. this was the, the hole you drilled to. Uh -huh. um, so I brought a Dremel if we just need to make a slight adjustment. Yeah. But it's looking like it's going to be pretty perfect. So those spring clamps really do come in clutch, guys. Yeah, it, it might be a good idea if you invest in some of those. I mean, it's just good to have them in your shop, in your garage, period. You see, if you have someone that can help you out and, you know, keep that out of the way. What I did was I just, um, you know, I, 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 I installed the little arm, the little uh, piston, yeah. you know, to it because I had no one to help me. Yeah. So I had to do it on my own. Just something to tie it off. And... Well, Willie assures me that he was not an engineer, but you, <laughs> you did have to use your brain in what you used to do back in before the Velox days, right? And oil and gas. Yeah. Oil and gas, man. The, the man, the man has. He, he's a smart guy. He's a smart guy. He, yep. he's a problem solver. So this thing looks like it's going to line up perfectly. There's nice. just like if you can look in here. Um, There's just a hair. Yeah, just a, a hawk. little difference. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it, and then uh, with the Dremel, mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to finish it off. Yeah. So that was a pilot hole, and now this is the larger diameter there. So in a lot of these spots where there's pinch welds, right? yeah. so you have two layers. When you drill through it, sometimes it pushes out that second layer. Looks like a bullet exit wound. Right? Yeah. Oh man, I didn't even notice this shit. No reason why I'm doing this. So we can get that washer on the backside. Uh huh. Just sit flat. This way, when you originally drilled it, uh huh. I thought that one was high, and this one was high. So, just trying to match yes. up. Originally, first placed this on here, uh -huh. the, the other going, yeah, was not fit for this window. Uh, so you're trying to probably make it fit, yeah. And so it's not going to sit where it should. Sit. Uh, so okay. when you drill the holes, it was at a different location. Understood. So. Um, but now this thing is specially made for these years. Now this thing should line up perfectly. Especially on the other side when we have yeah. the crush install. Just one last check. Yeah, 
So yes, guys, if we didn't make it clear, you know, there's already going to be on the GX 460, you're already going to have some holes that are going to, that should be lining up. There is going to be one that you have to drill, right, right, Willie? That's right. And that's the one that he was adjusting right now. Yeah. And this should be drilled, I mean, just because this is where your piston is and it gives you stability. Yes. Right here. Um, we wanted to put the piston here versus on the back side, uh -huh. um, just because there's a lot of meat here yes. for engineering purposes. Yeah. It's definitely the most stable spot versus a thinner aluminum is uh, prone to flex. Yes. Right? Um, so that's the one that you met, yeah, you mentioned double stamped. You know, you got double metal on that yeah. side. That's right. Okay. And yes, they look at this. It's right. Look at this, guys. Check this out. They even you know nice patch. This is badass. And Willie, everything worked out wonderful, man. Because the weather is amazing right now. Sweating. You're sweating. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna you wanna switch your shirt? Yeah, I'm like, oh, well. Oh, you, you got another layer, that's why. Okay. <laughs> this is another one that you guys talked about in your instructions, you know, or I've seen before. Once you're going to do this, this is very tacky, correct? Very tacky. And so you got to make sure that everything's squared away before you actually, you know, start pressing on it. Is that correct? Yes. So there's a little give. Um, like if it touches, you can pull uh -huh. away. Um, but once you start bolting it down, it's pretty permanent. Okay. As you saw from, from oh, yeah. the window delete, you know? Yeah. Um, and as you can see, he's meticulously, very carefully lining him up, making sure that uh, as he's placing it, he's doing it as accurately as possible because that. Like you said, it, it is a little forgiving, but well, the goal is to get it right the first time. Yeah. And I've done this enough times to where I'm confident. <laughs> yeah. I get it on there, I'm like, yeah, we're good. We always send customers extra washers and nuts. Um, it's inevitable. To, oh yeah, bro. To drop. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying my best. Let's see if I'm five for five. You will never hear someone cuss more <laughs> than uh, when that happens, brother. This one will be the long one on the bottom left yes. because it's a thicker spot. So you push through, there's a hole on the back side. Yes. So you just find it, get it started. So remember guys, the, the, the long one, the long one goes there, okay? That's what you gotta remember. There's gonna be one long bolt and that's where it goes. And the reason Willie's talking about that is because you got to remember, guys, that there's there's a you're kind of like dealing in between the, the 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 body, the exterior, and the interior of the, of the truck here. Let me get around this way. And if you're like butterfingers like me, and uh, you know you don't have that dexterity, and you know it happens. Oh man, a nut's gonna go down or you know, or your washer, you're gonna lose it, or even a screw and it'll be lost to the abyss. So they do include extra hardware. Don't go crazy, like, you know, chunking this at the birds or passing cars. But, you know, if uh, you do lose one, you know, at least you'll have some sort of uh, Hail Mary there. There you go. That's what I'm talking about, boys.
And guys, they do have the instructions. Will also help you if you're wondering, hey, well, what, what's the size of the of that hex that I need to use? The hex head or whatever. Um, what kind of wrench am I going to need? That's an 11 millimeter, is it? That's correct. Yeah, 11 millimeter. Um, so don't worry about that. You need you just need some basic tools. But uh, in all honesty, I mean, you should be investing in, in your tools. Uh, you can always use them, man. Tools and guns and, and bullets, you can't go wrong, man. You got to have ammo. You got to, you, you know, these are things that are always going to be valuable. This also adjusts out. So if you want a little more pressure, this thing can really cinch down. So what Willie's doing right now, he's checking, you know, the fit right now, okay? Just making sure because as he says, Willie, what is the most uh could be the most vulnerable spot for water to leak in to the, the gull wing? So as I mentioned, the backside, once it's bolted down, uh -huh. it shouldn't leak on the backside. Yeah. Um, the, the one thing we did do, um, we've always tried to put a bolt yes. or something that offsets the hinges. Yes. So that this is really, uh, they used to back in the day, had a tendency to flex okay. when you squish this down. Uh -huh. But as you can see, the, the flexure is now in the wing itself. Yes. Because it's aluminum and softer uh -huh. you know, metal. Um, so the one thing we look for is the gasket closure, right? You want to make sure this thing is sitting as flush as possible. Yes. So as you can see, the bulb gasket is pressing back up against the wing, uh -huh. making so well, that's a pretty good seal, and you can hear it. And you pressing. tested it with the with the with a lamp, light. right? Uh, it's probably better in the evenings, but yeah. Um, you, know, you put a light on here, and if you can see any kind of daylight or uh -huh. anything, then you know there's... That's an indicator. Yeah. Yeah. You know there's a gap. Nice. And so even though these sit a little further out than, uh, than your glass, uh -huh. um, when you close your door... Um, just the way the aerodynamics are, yeah, it'll, it'll push away from that. Even though this sits proud, it, um, my Forerunner also sits proud. Uh -huh. Even though it, you see it like this, yeah, it doesn't. It's car wash tested. It's hurricane tested. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the wind. There's no wind noise. There's no sand. There's nothing. Awesome. So it stays pretty watertight. Awesome. So the next step is putting your trim back on, right? Putting everything back together. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I do is put the uh, piston on. Oh, that's the very last thing? That's usually the last thing I do. Just, um, I could probably put it on now. Um, in Forerunners, the trim is very close to this. Yes. And it gets in the way when you're trying to put the trim back together. But the trim sits so far over here that I could probably put that on right now. That's gotcha. Great. I'm gonna hold this. Does this help? There you
So pretty much, you know, when what he's doing is just going to do a reverse, take the reverse steps, reverse action of how he uh, disassembled everything. That remember that piece that he's putting back up there. It is easy to 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 go ahead and replace if you do not remove those twisty little clips. And um, I, I I broke one. And my buddy Gabriel broke one, and another buddy from California broke one on his. So I really hope that you guys can learn something from this and not repeat, you know, our steps. So like I said, we're a small company. Yeah. Um, there's only one installer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, you're looking at him? One, one social media guy. Yeah. You're looking at him. Um, We've been trying to keep up with install manuals and videos and yeah. Yeah. We're working on it. This is, you know, we'll incorporate some of your footage and our other footage too to the reassembly and installation. Um, and the Lexus from Texas, yeah. my wife, she did an install video, but it was a very quick time lapse yeah it didn't give you the full story yeah um so yeah the little nuances that we've talked about you know, yes like the long bolt and not removing the trim yes those are very specific things that we'll make more aware in our manuals and videos and sort of that sort of thing yeah the, the long bolt you know uh, you know that's i mean people will end up figuring it out but you know like I did, but it, it does help to say, hey, there will be one long bolt and that one goes at the bottom left, you know, uh, hole. Yeah, don't freak out too much about that, dude, because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably put the grease later on anyway. Well, does that even wear use grease or no? The it should door, also, right? No, the door does not. Oh no? The back does. Oh okay. So usually So he took care of wing number one, okay, the driver's side. Now he's gonna be handling the passenger side one. And I'm very interested in the way this is gonna pan out because I have never disassembled this area, never looked into it. So this is all new to me. And so I would like to share some of this with you. So as you can see, he's removing that. There's gonna be a bolt right there. Phillips or ten. Okay. And these are also tens or Phillips, yeah. whichever. So he's pretty much repeating the process that he did on the driver's side. Uh, one thing that he did before uh, that I didn't catch on camera was obviously remove this little um, screw that you see right here, which is the same thing that you do on the driver's side. Mm -hmm. So again, he starts by removing the lower panel first, guys. That's the same thing. That's, that's what you're going to do on both sides. Always remove the lower panel because the top panels are beneath that one. Okay? So you have a luxury that you've removed the third row? Yes. So most are still going to have the third row. Um, this will be easier because of this totally frees up. Important um, important to note. So whenever you do have a third row, you'll just be prying this back. 
but this gives us so much more freedom and more access so i'm glad you have a third row room <laughs> yes yes and and i removed the panel i mean i already had that that bottom platform uh also with my fridge and everything so there's plenty more space uh because i knew this was coming so all right let's see here part one disconnect top and bottom yes two This one probably also has. I'm gonna pop this out. You don't have to. But, yeah. Um, does it have those two oh aluminum yeah, clips of as well? <laughs> of course it does. Yeah, these guys. Why wouldn't are, it? Yeah. yeah. So those clips that fit in here. Yeah. Sit up in here. Willie loves those clips, by They're the way. My again. favorite. Yeah. So you'll also have on this side a factory radio plug. Unplug. Okay. And that will also be a male that we replace that with. Once again, you just need to drop this. You don't need to remove it. Yes. If it wants to drop. <laughs> oh, welcome to my world. That's the, that's the way it goes, man. And this one also, I think. There it is. Oops. Yes. Oh, come on. You need your plus. Forerunners, I keep comparing it to Forerunners yeah, because these it. are very similar, but these are better built, if you will. Uh -huh. They take extra measures for like seals. Um, GXs have this extra little gasket on top of your glass wow. too. Um, so if you plan on keeping it, are you going to keep this glass? Probably, but I don't know if I'll ever use it again, but okay. to be honest with you. So if you don't, then what I usually do is I cut that off, mm -hmm. but I can keep it, obviously. So we just try to get in between the body and this little rubber seal. So what I'm going to do is we're going to just create a little separation. I'm going to put some tape in there. Yeah. And then, because uh, when that tool, when I feed it through, loves to um, nick paint. I use this tape. It's not like your regular blue tape. It's like oh, rubberized wow. oh, yeah. blue tape. I mean, there, there's other tapes you can use, but this is the one I have at the shop. But it is a little more durable than just regular blue tape. So prevent the nicking. And I'll layer it up really well. And again, um, my uh, disclaimer is I'm human. <laughs> so once the glass is out, I have a tool yeah. that I use. It's not just a straight edge. It's a, it's a hoof, hoof tool. Uh huh. And I'll show you in a second. And it's got a curved corner so it acts like a guard so it doesn't gouge. Gotcha. But without fail, like you're sitting there, you're making it clean. It'll like loosen, uh -huh. and then your hand slips. That and sometimes it, that, that sometimes it happens. That that's when it can happen. It can. Yeah. I try. Yeah. So 
what I'm trying to do is get this as far in there as possible to the body. So I know where I'm aiming. So this is a tool that Willie brought with him. You might want to check if you take it to a glass shop, you might want to ask them how they're going to remove your your glass because it does make a difference. You know, um, we're about to get to see this one in action. I can't wait to see it. But look at that, what he's doing right there. Seems like you fit that. It's a And it's not like a normal string. That's like a wax covered, you know, professional string, very strong one. And he fit outfitted in the uh, in the outside, and now he's gonna bring it in through there. And this is what he has on the exterior. Okay, if that makes any sense um, to you. But now he's gonna go fish for that line. Right. And that makes sense to me. There you is. <sighs> Great job. All right. What I'm going to do is try to take up the slack of whatever's on the outside. Okay. And then I'll reposition it once it's kind of tight. So what this thing does, it has a horseshoe where you lock on one side, and then you just kind of tighten up on the other side. Look at that, it's bringing in the slack. Oh wow. So just in case. Yeah, it catches your glass. Woo woo! If it's popping, something's working. Yep. It's free. And it's that easy. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Peel. Now, guys, the tool that he's using there is amazing. It's actually, he tells me, it's a hoof cleaning tool. And he specially modified it for this. It's so awesome. But he's been innovating. He's been, uh, you know, trying to uh, hone his uh, craft here, you know, a little bit better. There's a left-handed and a right-handed one. A left-handed and a right-handed tool, huh? This is so, guys, I'm telling you, this is so much smarter and uh, more efficient and cleaner than I can imagine. Um, the way he's prepping everything, that is definitely not the way we did the first one. Uh, when I went with that other shop, uh, I have scratches all over the paint. I'm not uh, done yet, so. <laughs> uh, Willie, let me make you look good, bro. Calm down. <laughs> uh, but so far, so great.
No pressure, Willie. No pressure. <laughs> Denatured alcohol. Yeah. You can use acetone. I used to use acetone. Um, it really is <coughs> very aggressive. <laughs> oh. Oh, this one has a sticker. There's two to drill here in this one. Yeah, one up top. Uh huh. And this guy. Okay. This one lines up, that's lined up, that's lined up, and that one's lined up. Once again, guys, that's a pilot hole, and then it goes with a real uh, bit. What are those hoses, dude? Do you know? You know what's funny? There's a blue one on the other side and yeah. a red one. So inside your fender well, uh -huh. like in Forerunners 2, like back in here, there is a uh, flap. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, that's what that is. It goes to that. For so the air? It's a pressurizer. Oh, yeah. wow. Pink and blue? Misogyny! <laughs> So what I noticed is that you, when you install it like this, you always use one, one of the holes. You already have a bolt through it. I guess you use that as a guide, yeah. the one in the center at the top. Yeah. Just to kind of guide it into place. And you slowly start pressing it in. Yeah. To where the, uh, the holes line up. Uh-huh. I've done it enough to where I'm pretty, like, yeah, <laughs> confident. Or... <laughs> Why did you go with? with that hardware so everything is countersunk right yeah so we use these flat heads with the 80 degree bend on them right? yeah so everything's countersunk like whenever we laser cut the holes then we get a 80 degree countersink drill bit mm -hmm. and this way whenever you put these um, flat heads on here it's flush you have nothing sticking out and so that creates a better seal Yes. And so then you use a stainless steel so it doesn't rust. And, you know, that was the thing was corrosion. Do you want it made out of steel or do you want it made out of aluminum? Well, obviously steel is a little more high strength. And, but aluminum will never rust. Mm -hmm. And you don't want rust. And you probably have had that where things start dripping down your vehicle. Yeah. It's like your car is bleeding and we didn't want that with our goings. Yeah. The, um, the long bolt. And at this point, you don't tighten them up like completely, right? You yeah, just kind of. Yeah, just kind of get them started. Yeah. Start removing. Because even though there's um, you know, the gasket's on there now. Yeah. 
it still has a little bit of a shift room. Yeah. To where it can still just, you know, mi microscopic. Yeah. yeah. Just minimal yeah. adjustments. Baby adjustments. In fact, now that's kind of like on here, you probably don't even need these clamps anymore. Yeah. It's, it's on here. Yeah. I, I would imagine it's the only the only reason is to kind of keep it closer to the hole, right? So you can go straight. Yeah. I notice you're leaving that to the very end. Oh, the hard one. That's the the difficult one. I can't ever give for it. you. <laughs> that was the one that was fighting me on that side. Yeah. I got frustrated and I walked away from it and came back to it. That, the one where you scared the old lady with a with the two dogs. Yeah. Jesus, man, making a neighborhood <laughs> make me look bad over here. <laughs> Which means it's gonna be the last one. Yeah. And you only drop one nut, bro. You only drop one nut. Yeah. That's okay. awesome. Outside. Outside. No, <laughs> oh no. No. Ah, there you go. False alarm. False alarm. See? <laughs> so this one, uh -huh. just because of the way we have to... So let me show you what we have to do. Because of the severity of this, right? The lip. Uh -huh. We had to bend these tabs more. So on all our goal wings, uh -huh. we have a 30, 30 degree bend. Okay. We had to bend these almost like 85 degrees. It's wow. almost a 90 degree bend just to clear this lip so that it's not hitting right? yes so what that does that the center of pivot is now out here instead of up high so when this rotates now it this hole kind of gets half covered wow and there's no way either you move it up higher and then it's harder to get to the nut or you move it down you get closer to the ledge so it's a matter of like you know th that fine spot and so we tinkered with it, and this was my idea, just to have it high enough to where I can get one of these on. Mm -hmm. And then with the ratchet wrench, I tighten it with a nut. Okay. Instead of using the drill like I did on all these other ones. Yeah. So. I was going to say, I don't, yeah, because I don't remember having to do that yeah. when I installed the, the other one. Man, I just, you know, I gotta say thank you for sharing these little details with me because I, you know, this is the stuff that people don't think about. Yeah. No, nobody, nobody uh, understands that there's gonna be minor changes 
you know, going along as you as you build products or whatever, minor tweaks. Yeah. It's crazy. Beautiful. Very nice. So you tuck it down in here and you just kind of zip tie them off. Like this. And again, these are replacements for your radio signals and that sort of thing. And we use another thing that we use that is not cheap is we use copper coated wire, right? These are not just regular braided lines. Mm. This is a solid piece of copper. Oh. And copper is probably one of the best conductors like for antennas and stuff like that. So check it out guys. This other side, the, the, the passenger side has I'm assuming all there. sorts of <laughs> different mechanical foam and mechanical gears and uh, I know I sound stupid saying this, but I, I don't know what the hell that is. I'm but uh, it's part of the seat. It looks like yeah. Kind of gear. If you know what it is, please comment down <laughs> below. How about that? But as you saw, Willie, he, it pretty much what you need to know is that the that the passenger side is pretty much identical to the to the driver side panel for your application. If you're you know because we are focusing up on on the gull wing install anyway. versus the other side. Yes. So let me get this straight. The all of those little spots that we, all the little dirt or dust or whatever, grease yep. from our hands, most of it comes out with a denatured alcohol and a clean rag? Yep. Good. Man, I didn't know this. <laughs> wow. The more you know. The more you know. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, guys. I'm looking at Willie over here. We're going to try it with a hose. Let's see if it works. All right. Come on, Willie. All right, we're wish we're washing the truck here. All right, is that to our satisfaction? <laughs> Anything come in? No. Nope. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Oh, there's some water coming in right there when you oh, opened yeah. it. Whenever there will be some water. That... Is that is that to be expected? Yeah. So it pulls up on top. Oh, okay. Okay. So when you first open it like that, water will dump. In. So that's a warning right there. Okay. That that should be uh. Understand, guys, that some water droplets might come in so if you have something that's super sensitive to water or whatever a few drops that might happen otherwise hey it passed the test <laughs> yeah guys both gull wings are on mr willie vera over here he got it done all the way from houston willie if somebody is interested in the product how can they get a hold of you brother yeah, so go to VeloxOffRoad.com. Um, that's where we have all our products listed. You can find us on Instagram, Veloc's Off Road. Um, we're on Facebook also. Um, most of our products are tagged. Um, uh, right now, we're rolling out almost weekly new products, so keep checking the website, VeloxOffRoad.com, for new products for each vehicle. For instance, 460s, we're rolling out like a... I told you before our yeah. heavy duty shelves yeah. are now going to be available for 460s mm -hmm. um ditch light brackets there's a bunch of other products that we just can't keep up with fast enough and laser can't come quick enough so just constantly updating keep checking
Wonderful. So Willie is extremely tired. He's got to drive all the way back to Houston. I'm going to let him go because I need to test these gull wings where it really counts at South Padre Island. Take care, brother. I've been enjoying my Velox gull wings for a couple of months now. It's amazing how fast you become used to them. Frankly, it's one of my favorite mods to date. No leaks, rattles, or structural issues to report. The product is solid. The driver's side has a molly panel, so I have access to a first aid kit, fire extinguisher, a car battery charger, and the winch controller. I also carry some soft shackles. The passenger side is open so I can access my kinetic rope and other recovery gear. This is what I envisioned and now I can enjoy this when at the beach. I hope this video helped you. Please consider subscribing, liking, and dropping a comment down below. Get up, get out, do something.